So we're going to welcome up, back up, Charlie Smith, who talked about custom programming earlier. He's going to talk about custom data migrations here. Charlie? Thank you. So I just wanted to bring up the introductory slide there. Know your data. No, your data. That's a really important piece of this, of uh, custom data migrations. Um, so I'll make it quick. I'm Charlie. I've been with the company for 20 years. Most of my background has been in QA and testing. Um, in my private time, I do enjoy nature, hiking, uh, biking, running, stacking rocks, all kinds of interesting things. And in my private time, I donate my time to a men's growth organization. And I'm very proud of that work that I do. Thank you. So custom data migrations. I'm wondering how many of you are aware that you've done a custom data migration? Show of hands, okay. And how many of you are aware that you've actually all done a migration of data? It may not have been a custom data migration, but the data had to come from somewhere and be brought into a depth so that you can use the system. So really, everyone here has done a data migration of sort. We may not have done custom coding for it for you. So the, where's the data? That's the, that's the single most important question that we need to know. Where is your data and where's the metadata associated to that? So what I'll do is talk about uh, three different forms of data migrations that we've done um, and sort of talk about the differences of those and some of the challenges that are experienced. Form one that I'm going to talk about is the scan and sync. And really, any time that an AC has come on site for you and has um, you know, evaluated your folder structure and taken a look at where all your documents reside and then made decisions about which documents will come into the system and which documents won't, um, that is a form of a data migration. Uh, if the metadata associated to those documents resides as attributes inside title blocks or properties inside documents, and we have mapped those fields to our ADEPT fields and extracted that data and brought them into our system, that's a data migration. It's very simple, but it's a data migration. Also, as um, some people have already mentioned during this conference, uh, many of the folder structures are very complex and very deep, and in some cases, there's only one document residing in one folder. And that folder name itself might be a particularly important piece of metadata for you. So what we can do is bring those documents from all the various folders that they're in and bring them up into maybe a root-level folder right under the vault. And all those folder names along the way we can create as custom fields in ADEPT so you still have that data to search by and find the documents and organize them in ways that are meaningful to you. Um, in addition, so besides just the uh, properties, we also extract the thumbnails. There's two different ways to see thumbnails in our system. And then the relationships that um, especially the CAD products produce, we extract that information and then we display it in ways that you can see your data. So the next form that I'll talk about um, adds another layer to that, what I just discussed in the first form. Uh, if you have maybe spreadsheets or comma separated value files, CSV files, some of these um, forms of databases are actually used to track important metadata as well. So if you have your documents on your system and then you also have um, other documents which track information about those documents, we can use both forms as sources and bring all that information into the system and get you set up to use your data. Form three, uh, this one's the big challenge. Um, this one can take the longest. Um, in some cases, uh, it's another EDM system, um, maybe Meridian or something like that that you're currently using. For one reason or another, it's not working for you the way that you want to see it happen. We can extract the data out of that database, make it ours, <laughs> put it into the ADEPT system so that you can use your system that way. 
Uh, in many cases, these are proprietary databases. They're encrypted. Um, in many cases, the documents themselves are pulled into the database in these blob fields, and then they're renamed and encrypted as well. So getting them out, finding what the link is back to the true name of the document is a really important piece, and then putting it in place with its metadata. It can be like a snipe hunt to find those things in there. Does it really exist? It has to. It has to. And sometimes reverse engineering these things can take really long, laborious hours. So really big hats off to our extraction team when they get, dig into those kinds of things. In some cases, um, we have seen examples where there are several different sources. And because of that, there are different metadata in those different sources. So linking up which pieces of metadata from the different sources match up, because they may not be named the same, but they may contain the same meaningful data, and then mapping the three different types all back to, the, to a single field in adept. It's, it's, a real, um, it's a real love affair with data. Um, digging in and understanding it is, is a challenge. So uh, similar to yesterday, I'll go just an overview of the process that we go through. Uh, discovery and analysis, uh, designing the data migration specification. We go through the extraction, transform, and load. You heard that acronym earlier, ETL. Then there's the test migration. Now, leading up to the test migration, that's where the meat of the work is done. Um, once we actually get the test migration, we give it to you, typically. We deliver it to you in a sandbox environment, and you're given a period of time to look through the data, make sure it makes sense, make sure it's linking up the way that you want it to, and that you have a usable system. Uh, this is your opportunity. Once you're in the test, once the test migration is complete, we can do iterations with you to clean up certain things, rerun the test migration. Um, I'm aware that at a particular client we have right now, I think we're on our fifth run of a test migration. So we really pay attention to detail and we make sure to review it with you, the customer, to make sure you're getting exactly what you want for your ADEPT system. Once all that work has been done, you know, we've gone through the development of the data migration. We've tested ourselves internally before we deliver it to you. Once you have signed off and agreed that the data is exactly as you want to see it in ADEPT and you are ready to go, then we can schedule the production migration. And that involves shutting down the system for a period of time, making sure that people have their work out in their areas so they can continue working. We run the production migration, and really it can take, depending on the number of documents and the size of your, your system, it can take anywhere from a few hours, and in some cases, a couple of days of constantly running. I mean, if you have two million documents that we are going to sort through with code and make sure that they all get exactly where you want them in our system, that's gonna take some time, especially if they're larger CAD files and things. So once we've sorted it all out and you agree that this is exactly what you want for your ADEPT implementation, we can go live with the production migration for you. Some of the common hurdles that we encounter while evaluating data. Duplicates, duplicates, duplicates. Is there an echo in here? Uh, in some cases, uh, hundreds of thousands of duplicate documents with the exact same name can exist in your system. And that's because uh, some other folks have spoken to this. Uh, each engineer has his own idea about, or her own idea, about exactly the organization of the folder structure that you want to see. So it's up to us then to evaluate your system and tease out all those different methods and make sure that we're really clear about what data is what and where it's going to go. Uh, XREFs in particular, gosh, it's so hard sometimes to go out there on the folder structure and find that one little file that's got that one little thing that I need. Is it really just in one place? Hmm. Maybe I'll just make my own copy and throw it in a subfolder, right? How many of you have ever done that? I, I, I don't see any hands. I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, so next, then I'll get into revisions and versions. What is it? Is it a revision? Is it a version? Um, 
what does that mean to you? I know we have our own way of using the term version, adept versions, and some of you use both revision and version interchangeably. So in those folder structures, for us to be able to find exactly where you keep your versions or revisions, um, it's really important for us because we have to build sort of a backlog history of your versions. And we want to find the very first one from a particular lineage that you want to have in your database. we got to put that one in first. Then what's the next one? So we build our version tables for you so that as soon as you go live, you have that history, and it's all available to you. Uh, another really interesting thing is the path names. And we have gone back and forth internally about what is the appropriate length of, uh, for us to allow the path to be. You know, the path itself is, is the middle section. Leading the path is the server name and the share name. I don't know, that can be 25 or 30 characters. On the tail end is the file name itself. How, how, what's the longest a file name can be? 256 characters or something? I don't know. So, uh, you know, us really realizing that when we nest paths down in the virtual library, when we reorganize our, the data locally so that we can get to it and display it to you, we have to consider all these different paths. So, you know, it's a constant conversation and reevaluation about exactly what the maximum allowable path is for you. We help you with that. And as I was um, alluding to, uh, the path structure itself sometimes gives us a hint about whether you want to bring that data into the system or whether it might be data that's outdated or something like that. So oftentimes we'll find a folder nested way down deep in, in the folder structure and it says delete me. And the folder has like 50 documents in it. Who's supposed to delete it? <laughs> I think I, I know that I get very nervous about deleting data, and it sounds like a lot of you do too. That makes sense. It's valuable, you know, it's 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 intellectual property that's important. So even though it might say delete me, why are you holding on to it? You know, does it need to go in an archive somewhere so that you could retrieve it at a later date? These are important things for us to understand so that we don't we don't, uh, you know, bring things into the system that you don't need. Um, and so archive, whether it's a revision or a version, um, sometimes it's REV, sometimes it's VER, and then old is common too, old. What does that really mean? So we help you analyze all your data and all your folder structures. And as you can imagine, it can take a really long time because each and every file in a data migration needs to be touched. And we want to be really clear about exactly what your intention is for your system in order that we do it correctly for you. As you can imagine, over time, we've built up um, a repertoire of custom tools. We have a directory scanner. Uh, it's one of the first things that we send to you. We ask you to scan all the folders on your network that you could potentially bring into the system. And this can be millions and millions of documents in some case. So this directory scanner gives us really important information. Uh, then we also have data extraction tools. This is custom code that we've written to go into these databases, to go into Excel spreadsheets and files, identify important data, extract it out, and then do something with it for you. We also have a vault creator tool, which actually puts all the new library structures in place and then places all the documents one at a time in each one of those folders for you so that your library structure in your vaults is ready to go. So how does this apply to you? Um, most of you are current customers who already have been through this process with us. Um, in some cases, uh, you might acquire another company. I've already heard uh, several of you discuss the fact that you've acquired a new company. Um, if that company has its own intellectual property that you want to bring in to join your data so that you're a complete and whole entity, we can talk about bringing in that new data into the existing database that you might already have. Uh, maybe when you implemented ADEPT, you started with just a small project. 
I know that they, we do this kickstart thing. Um, sometimes we do a pilot. And in some cases, you might simply bring in one project that you want to try Adept out with. Um, once you get to the end of that project and you decide on joining the Synergist family and using Adept, we can then talk to you about what it means to bring in the rest of your data into your system so that it's ready to go. Once again, uh, uh, I got to say, this, this team of uh, folks that I've been working with over this last year, they're a really special, tightly knitted team. And uh, for them to be uh, putting out all the code to produce the custom programs for you, as well as spending the highly detail-oriented time that it takes to analyze your data and do these custom data migrations, uh, Sean Swope is a developer. Russ Reese is also a developer. Rashmi Chinoar does a lot of our documentation, delivery, and testing of the, of the uh, data. Robert Hales he used to be an AC actively out in the field, and now he works with us and helps implement some of the things that we do. And then I help coordinate all these efforts with, between the team and with our external customers. So that's about it. Any questions or anything that I could attempt to answer? Okay. You guys are hungry, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, yeah, thank you.